Hey everyone, this is Joe. I am the Digital Astronomer. As you can see, I'm outside on a gorgeous night getting ready to do some imaging. Last night, I started working on a brand new project on the Iris Nebula. Now, this is a stretch for me. I've never shot this type of nebula before. What's interesting about the iris is it has an element of a reflection nebula and then a dark element. And so that's the challenge. I've never been able to capture dark nebula before. So we're gonna see how it works. I've got five hours of data that I got last night. I'm gonna do at least another five tonight and then we're gonna stack it and we're gonna take a look at it and learn a little bit more about this really neat object in the northern sky. Stick around, I'll be right back. Okay, as always, I want to give you a little bit of instructions on how to find this object in the night sky. You'll notice here I am in the uh, free planetarium software, Stellarium. I'm looking slightly to the northeast. Um, here is the very, very bright star, Deneb, which is pretty easy to find in the night sky. If you work your way south, you come to Alderamin. Uh, this is also known as Alpha Cephei. It's the brightest star in uh, Cepheus. Um, an interesting note on Alderamin. This is a um, star that is rapidly rotating. Uh, astronomers have observed it, and they find that it's rotating at a rate of once every 12 hours. Now, this has nothing to do with the picture I'm taking, but that's interesting. Our sun takes um, uh, 27 days to completely rotate. Uh, this is on the par with Jupiter. For instance, Jupiter is rotating about every 10 hours, and so just two hours longer. And this entire star, which is uh, uh, more massive than our sun, is rotating. Now, it is getting near the end of a phase in its life cycle. It's almost out of of hydrogen fuel and soon will become a red giant. So that's just a little bit of information on this star. But if you if you if you move to the south and slightly to the west of Alderamin, you're going to come to the Iris Nebula. And you'll notice here I'm using the framing circle uh, the framing tools uh, in Stellarium to show you what it's going to look like in my camera. Now even though this is often referred to as NG7023, that's a little bit of a misnomer. NGC7023 is actually the little star cluster here in the center of the, um, the nebula. The nebula itself is technically uh, cataloged as Caldwell 4 or LBN487. So, most of the time, though, we're going to refer to it, the whole structure as NGC 7023. Now, let me go over, and I want to show you just a short clip that I took of how I captured this using astrophotography tool. And I especially want you to see the guiding that I was getting with the new Skywatcher HEQ5. And what's really impressive about this is I did very little tweaking or adjustments on the uh, um, on the guiding and got the, some of the best guiding that I've ever gotten. So let's go take a look at that real quick. Okay, I thought I would just, uh, I don't usually show a lot of the capture video on here, but I thought I'd take a minute just to show you what I've got. Um, I have already captured about 30 images tonight. This is what they look like. Now, this isn't all that impressive, but you can see the Iris Nebula here. Let me take the crosshairs off so you can kind of see it. I'm using uh, astrophotography tool. This dark area where you're not seeing very many stars, of course, that's the dark nebula. This is the reflection nebula in here. Um, you know, again, you don't see very much on these raw uh, pictures, uh, but um, this is looking pretty good so far. I'm getting nice round stars. My guiding is... Um, 
Actually, it was a little bit better. Um, I think it will improve here over the next couple of minutes. I just did the meridian flip a few minutes ago and recalibrated. And so I'm not sure this is settled down yet. I see it starting to drop a little bit. But I've been down around in the low 70s, um, even dropped into the 50s a little bit. But this is pretty good guiding. I haven't really done a lot of uh, tweaking around on this new Skywatcher HEQ5, but so far I'm really happy with it. It's giving me great guiding. Uh, again, if I go over to the magnification here, uh, bring the magnifier down, you can kind of look. I'm getting uh, good round stars. Um, you know, so I'm pretty happy with that. That's good guiding if you're getting good round stars. Looking forward to it. I'm going to collect um, probably at least another um, uh, 30 or so. Uh, images tonight. I collected 80 a couple nights ago. I've got uh, 30 that I've already collected. Maybe another uh, 30 or 40. Maybe we'll see how we'll see how tired I get. But it's about uh, 12 o'clock now, and uh, I'm going to image for at least a couple more hours, probably up until around 3 a.m. So I should get another um, uh, good batch here going. But anyways, um, we'll uh, we'll get ready and we'll stack the images here in the next segment. Okay, all told, I collected 148 four-minute long subs. That gave me a total of integration time of about 9.8 hours, almost 10 hours. And you can see here in Astro Pixel Processor, I am going to stack uh, all 148 of those lights. Um, I'm also going to use a master flat, a master dark, and a master dark flat. By the way, with the ZWO183MC Pro, I found that using the master dark flat works best. Using dark flats works a little bit better than bias frames. That's my opinion. Uh, others may differ on that, but that's what I decided to stack. Here, I went ahead and brought up one of the subs, so you can kind of see the data that I'm working with. Overall, pretty good, round, tight stars. You can see the nebula here. Um, the only things that I really change as far as my settings is on Astro Pixel Processor is I come over to Integrate, and um, I'm going to um, change the uh, I'm going to um, I'm going to leave the weights at equal or I'm sorry um, on a quality I'm going to come down and change that from equal to quality leave the integrate at uh, average. I'm also going to come down, I'm going to go and I am going to use normal uh, local normalization correction. I'm going to come down and do one first degree LNC, three iterations. I'm also going to change the outlier rejection to LN Mad Sigma Clip. These are the settings that work best for me. Um, once I've got that set, I'm going to click on integrate. Let me just quickly show you this um, because I've already done this processing here. I'm going to drop down Photoshop. This is the stacked image that came out of Astro Pixel Processor. And honestly, this looks pretty good. I was really happy with what it looked like. I'm going to post part process it a little bit to bring out some more of this dark nebulosity. I'm also going to clip it a little bit. This star appears a little bit funky. I'm not really sure what happened there. It really came out with this big halo on it. Doesn't look so great. Um, but everything else looks really good. I was really happy with this stack. This is the finished product. After I got done doing all my post-processing, this is the image. You can see I clipped it a little bit, and I've brought out a little bit more of this dark nebulosity. Now, I'm not sure how well that's showing up on the YouTube video, but if you go over to my um, Astro Bin page or on my Instagram page, you can see this picture, uh, even download it and take a look at it in full resolution, and it looks much better. Now, very quickly, let's talk about the object, because I think this is really a fascinating object. Now, you'll notice what we have here. This is the dark nebulosity that's around it. All of this is very, very cold dust. Now, what's happened here is if we move in, and I just zoom in just a little bit. Let's zoom in 
to the actual, this is the iris nebula, this bluish part here. And what you have here, um, uh, again, is a very hot star at the center. There are actually a couple of very bright stars here, but this is the, the, the main culprit. This very bright star, which is designated as HD 2775. This is a star that has about 10 times the mass of our low, of our, our sun. And what's happening is it's illuminating this dust cloud around it and giving it this very blue shade. Also, the um, solar winds that are coming off this very massive star have sort of cut out this section here um, so that we can see it. Now, Unlike emission nebulas that we've looked at in the past, for instance, let me go over here and just uh, maybe call up one here for you very quickly. An, em an emission nebula is very, very different. Let me take a look here and see if I've got one. This is a good example here of an emission nebula. Uh, this is the Veil Nebula. What's happening here is the 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 gases here are being excited or ionized by um, by a local star or by some other force. They're being ionized and they're actually glowing. That's not the case that you have here in the Iris Nebula. This is just merely the light from this star being reflected off of this material here at its center. And so we're able to see it. This is my first attempt really at this type of nebula. And I was pleased. Uh, I still have some work to do. And maybe if I went back, back and added some more exposure time, I might be able to get out this dark nebulosity to appear very uh, a little bit more prominently. But overall, I'm very excited about it. I cannot believe how good these stars came out. Look at how nice, round, and tight these stars uh, came out. These are some of the best that I've ever had. That's the guiding that's on that HEQ5. I'm really, really pleased with it. And um, I think that's only going to prove. Well, anyways, that's the Iris Nebula. I hope that you enjoyed this. We're going to uh, hopefully get out um, here in the next couple of days and be able to do a little bit more imaging. Um, I've actually got um, some data from the Eagle Nebula that I, I, I've already shown you how I processed that in a previous video, but I would like to maybe just take a look at that and just look at the object and talk a little bit more about what it is. But again, this is a really neat, uh, you get in here tight on this, look at the little clouds that are here. You can see some of the texture that's there. Um, really, really fascinating object. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a favor, subscribe, and also please share it with your friends so that they have an opportunity uh, to see these and also hopefully they'll subscribe and help me build uh, my channel a little bit. I appreciate you taking time to watch it today. Thank you. Just a quick reminder, if you enjoyed this video, please help support me by clicking on thumbs up and share. Thank you.